day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome, friends, to worship. I'm glad you are here. From whatever your week has contained, may this be a time of prayer, song, and scripture to nourish your heart and soul for the week to come. There are a couple of announcements written in the bulletin. I won't really highlight any of them for you today. Um, I know this is the end of the summer, the last few weeks, and you may be getting ready for school to resume in your house in some form or fashion. Uh, maybe you're taking a little bit of time off as I am uh, in the next days to enjoy this time and to refresh yourself for the coming fall season. Even while I am away, um, know that you will have these videos here and available for you to worship uh, every Sunday morning as you have come to expect. And uh, there is virtual coffee hour today after worship at 10 a.m. on Zoom. The link to that Zoom meeting is in your Sunday e-news. It'll be hosted by a member of the vestry this morning. But do pop in for even a few minutes just to say hi to familiar faces, uh, to hear how people are doing, to share a little bit about what's going on in your life. It's a wonderful time of fellowship. So I would urge you, even if you haven't tried it before, um, pop in one week and say hello. And I just uh, welcome you here. I wish for you peace and rest in these next 20 or 30 minutes. There are some wonderful scriptures this morning, the story of Moses and the burning bush, some of Jesus' most memorable teachings. And I am here um, by one of the quotes I have up on my wall for a reason. Be still and know that I am God. Uh, we hear the name of God spoken in our Exodus reading this morning. So please forgive the brightness of the window behind me, but I've tried to balance it out as best I could. Regardless, please know that you are ever walking in God's sight, that your creator always holds you in the palm of God's holy hands, that you are safe and you are well there. May you know the peace that passes understanding. Let us center our hearts and minds as we worship God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Almighty God, unto you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works, 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. The Word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I offer this to you in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So which is it? Last week, Peter was the rock on which Jesus would build the church. And this week, Peter is the stumbling block in front of him. Is Peter the consummate disciple, or is he the one who gets in the way of Jesus' ministry? The answer, of course, is both. Peter is, like us, just trying to understand, trying to follow Jesus. And this week, Jesus gives him this new teaching, all of the disciples, this new teaching that is hard for them to hear. Take up your cross and follow me if you want to be a disciple. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. We don't have to think very hard to figure out what it means to lose our life. Even to lose our life for God's sake. Whether it's to be lost in grief or questions or a struggle for justice, to lose your life happens all the time. The promise here is that it's in that losing that we'll find it. If we try too hard to hold on to the things we know and that we think will keep us safe, it's there that we will ultimately actually lose. But if we let go, if we let go and if we live the road that is before us, following Jesus all the way, Jesus promises that we will find life and new life in the journey. I think Moses in our reading from Exodus this morning knows something about losing his life to find it because he's about to lose his life. God comes to him in this famous story of the burning bush and says, go, be a prophet to my people in slavery in Egypt and bring them out into freedom, into the land of Israel. Of course, Moses protests and doesn't quite know what to do with this, but his life is about to be completely changed, losing the life of shepherding his father-in-law Jethro's flock to being a leader of thousands of people. Little did he know it was going to take 40 years of wandering and whining and cajoling in the desert to figure out this new life. But the new life comes. And in fact, the journey is finding life. So how does it all begin? This beautiful, beautiful story from Exodus has so much for us in it. Moses is minding his own business on the mountainside, tending the sheep, and he turns and looks at this bush that is on fire but not consumed. And the mystery captures his attention and he stops and looks. And God uses that opportunity. Moses has paid attention to a mystery. And God steps in and he calls his name Moses, Moses. And Moses replies, here I am. God takes another step, remove the sandals from your feet, for this is holy ground. And man, if we shouldn't remove the shoes from our feet sometimes and put our feet in the grass and feel like it is holy ground, it would be a good spiritual practice. 
But Moses and God do this dance. Moses takes a step toward the mystery and God meets him and takes another step. And then Moses returns and they do this dance around. And that is prayer in many ways. It is this dance with God. It is stopping and paying attention to the mystery and being open to it. And then God comes to meet us for one step and we meet God and God comes again and tries again and we meet God again and we dance together. And so Moses continues with this dance and God finally comes to the big step, to the big twirl and he says, okay, I want you to go to Egypt and be my prophet and save my people from Pharaoh. And Moses says, well, really? You sure about that? And God says, I will be with you. I will help you. Moses says, all right, well, if you're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob of our ancestors, well, and I go tell this to all of these strangers in Egypt to get them to trust me, who am I gonna say sent me? What is your name? And God replies with this great line. Tell them I am sent you. The word in Hebrew has a number of different translations. The word itself sort of moves and dances. The word is three letters, Y-H-W-H. In Hebrew, only the consonants are written and vowels have to be filled in. So there's a lot of play on words that's possible. And that, those consonants form the word Lord, but they also form the word to be. And more than to be, to become. So you can translate this word Yahweh, I am, also as I will be. I am who I am, or I will be whosoever I will be. I will become whosoever I will become. The name of God, in fact, is being and becoming and life itself. Wherever there is life, there is God. God's promise to Moses is that God will be with him each of the steps. God will be with each of the Israelites as they lose their life to find it. As they let go of what they know to embrace what they don't and trust that it will be good and new because it is with God. May we lose our lives and in the losing, may we trust that God is with us in the finding. I will be whosoever I will be. So every time Jesus tells the disciples and the crowds, I am the living water. I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is reminding them of this episode in Exodus where God first uttered the name, I am. May we know that wherever we are, whatever we feel we may be losing, whatever cross we are bearing right now, whatever way life seems to be lost, or we are on the journey to finding it, that God is with us in the finding. God is with us in the losing and the finding again and again and again. This is the dance of prayer. This is the dance of faith. Be attentive to the mystery. See God in each step and keep dancing. I stood here for a reason in front of this picture that I have on my wall. It says, be still. It reminds me of this story. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. We pray for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Nicholas, our bishop, and for all priests, deacons, and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We exalt you, Lord, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may find a place in your internal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We also pray for forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Christ Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace.